I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig and camping season is upon us here in Colorado. Luckily, Mountain Hardware has us covered. This is the Aspect 3 and inside we also have two sleeping bags. Callie has the Rook and I have the Phantom, which we've also reviewed, so be sure to check those out. Diving into the Aspect 3, as the name may imply, this is a three-person tent. Now, Callie and I are obviously only two people. However, Hank makes up the third. If we had a two-person tent, we find that Hank really kind of encroaches in our space. We can't sleep. He's all up in our business. It's just not any fun. Also with the three, besides having the vestibule that you can see here, we have a lot more room inside the tent. Unfortunately, Cal and I can't seem to really pack that light. So having a little bit of extra room inside the tent to put gear is always a great thing. However, if you just want the two, this is a very similar tent to the two, just a little bit larger. With this tent, you do have two vestibules. You can see that I'm obviously kind of standing in this vestibule area right here. The vestibule makes up about 9.58 square feet. So they're rather large. You can easily throw your pack under here, shoes. If you're on a bicycle trip, panniers or motorcycle trip for that fact, definitely be able to throw your panniers in here. I think one of the first things that I really noticed about this tent when I took it out of the package is just how light it is. The minimum weight on this tent's three pounds, 10.7 ounces, and you can really feel that, especially when maybe you've had heavier tents in the past. You can feel the lightness alone just in the rain fly when you're trying to drape it over the tent. It feels almost like a silk sheet. Usually lighter weight materials also tend to be a little bit less durable. Now, the rain fly on the Aspect 3 is still a ripstop nylon material, and there's nothing that stands out that I would say, oh, I definitely think this is gonna blow out a few years down the road. The stitching, the seams, they all seem really high quality. It's just a lot lighter than what I'm used to. I don't think that I'm gonna to wanna to go throw it into the trees or on a cactus. That probably wouldn't stand up to the abuse very well. However, using this like it's meant to be used, I think that it's gonna last years down the road. To help cut down on the weight, Mountain Hardware's done a few things that I've not seen in tents before. One, they've done away with all the clips and buckles that maybe you've seen on tents in the past. With the rainfly, they have cord that's actually attached to the rainfly, which you can attach to a stake. And then it's as simple as pulling that cord to tighten it up, or on this little piece of plastic, you can pull it back and that gives you all the slack in that cord. So on tents that I've always had, this piece here has always been a piece of webbing, just a little bulkier, a little bit heavier. To cut down on the weight, they've used this piece of cord. Works the same way, just a little bit lighter. The rainfly itself does not have any vents that you can open. However, I found this material to be relatively breathable and I can get away with not having to open and close vents. Also, those add to a little bit of bulk as well as a little bit of weight. If I step back, you can see on the door, you do have a nice closure system here that basically keeps the door rolled up and out of your way if you want some airflow. It's easily undoable and the door does feature a two-way zip. So if you want to zip it closed with some Velcro, you're now gonna keep out all the elements. But if you find that you want a little bit of airflow, you don't want the door flapping, you can actually unzip it from the top and you can see that you have a nice breeze that can come through the tent. Another feature that Mountain Hardware is doing that I like is over here on the side of the tent, you have one tie down off of the rain fly here. And then on the other side of the tent, you have another tie down and they've included the cord with this. Some companies don't do that, kind of annoying. But what's nice about this is that it helps to pull this rain fly off of the side of the tent and produce some airflow underneath to just help keep that tent nice and cool. You can see that it's just this small piece of cord and they've done a great job engineering a system that allows a ton of adjustability on where you can actually place this stake and how far away from the tent you can make it. You can literally bring it all the way out here if you so desire. That's a tripping hazard. However, maybe it's a little booby trap for bears. Also on the outside of the rain fly, you do have four additional tie down points on the very edges here. You've got one, two, three, and four. They don't provide the cord for these, nor do they provide the stakes. However, if you find that maybe you're gonna be entering an environment that is extremely stormy with high winds, 
tying down these corners is gonna give you that much extra stability. It's great to have, but it's something that not everyone needs. Also, we talked about how the vestibule attaches to that stake in the front. On the sides here, the Rainfly, again, has the same system with the same cord, and it does not clip in like I mentioned. You can see that it actually just slides around this light aluminum piece that is part of the tent, and that's what is attaching the vestibule and the Rainfly to the tent itself. Now, if I undo everything, I'll take the rain fly off and we can really dive into the meat of the tent. Now that we can really see the meat and bones of this tent, there are a couple things that I want to touch on. One is this pole design. You may notice that the pole actually has a little bit of a contour right in this area here. So instead of just following this general shape that's on the top and then cutting down right through here. It actually kind of cuts up and then turns a little flat as it goes over the roof. And what that's doing is it's providing you with more room inside of the tent. So instead of cutting off these corners like a lot of people would do, this one just kind of comes out a little bit more flat and then takes an angle out in that direction a little bit more. Also with the pole design is how it actually attaches the pole to the tent itself. Everything we've had in the past have been little plastic buckles or clips of some sort that go around the pole. This one is, again, just a piece of cord that wraps up and around this hook that's permanently attached to the pole. You can just pull on the cord and attach it to the hook and you're set to go. They're doing everything they can to cut down on the weight and the bulk of this tent. And something simple like that really does in the end play a big role in that. Now, when this tent is completely compressed down, it only comes in at six inches by 22 and a half inches. So it's very small, lightweight, compressible, easily throw it in your pack and take it with you. You can see that obviously the front door here is open and we have this tied back right now. This is another thing that they've done with a piece of cord that's sewn into the mesh. You can just take this door and feed it through that piece of cord easily and quickly. You've got the door tied up and out of your way so you can get in and out of the tent really easily. You can see that the mesh comes down probably about three fourths of the way down the entire tent. And then down here at the bottom, you have the ripstop nylon material. This is great because if you have a rainstorm that's come through, the ground's all wet. Callie and I woke up in Mexico once and we were literally camping in a river pretty much. It wasn't like that when we set up, it was like this. However, all the water just came down right into our tent. What's great about having the sides come up like this is that you're gonna keep that water out. Now, one thing to note, if you recall when the rain fly was on, that obviously does not go all the way down to the ground. When you have mesh that comes down, close to the ground like that. Something Cal and I found, especially in Moab, Utah, there's a lot of sand and they have a lot of wind. What can happen is that sand can actually get pushed up underneath the rain fly and then through all of this mesh and into your tent. There's really not a great way to prevent that from happening other than maybe not having any mesh at all. Even if this mesh started up here in Moab, Utah, you would still find sand in your tent. To help keep you organized, Mountain Hardware has incorporated a few pockets in this tent. You have one in the corner over there, as well as one right here in this corner, and then a pocket that goes across the entire top of the tent. They also have included up in the ceiling, a couple of these loops that have been sewn in. So if you have a lantern or something like that, you can hang it there. And then one last pocket right here, a nice little triangular shaped one. The only thing that I would like to see is if there were maybe pockets in each corner. However, because of the tent design, the mesh is higher up off the ground in that corner as well as in this corner so that you can put pockets there. You can see that the mesh comes all the way down here and they didn't include any pockets right there. It's not the end of the world, but it's great if every single person that's sleeping has a pocket by their head to throw their phone or anything like that. I kind of like that. However, you still have some in the ceiling. It's easy enough to work around and it cuts down on the weight. If I crawl into the tent, you can see just how much room I have above my head as well as off of my shoulders. Now this tent provides roughly 43 inches of headroom. I'm six feet tall and I have plenty of headroom in here. If I need to get in 
like you're gonna be going to bed or you're doing stuff in here, you're throwing sleep bags around, you can see just how much headroom I have. If I try to sit up all the way, obviously my head hits the top, but definitely plenty of room in here to get in, move stuff around, and so on. You can see that we just have the two sleeping bags in here. And with the two that we have, the pads in particular are a little bit wide. Having a third in this tent with these pads would make it so that the pads are actually kind of overlapping and sitting on top of each other. Not the end of the world, but having three people in this, it would definitely fit, but you'd wanna make sure that your pads were maybe a little bit narrower, maybe to the size of your sleeping bag, so that everyone had their little bit of space. I think though, if you've ever crammed three people into a tent, you know that it is a little bit tight quarters and you're gonna to get to know each other really well. A couple last things I'd like to mention. One are the stakes that Mountain Hardware sends with this tent. Now you may think a stake is a stake, how big of a deal is this? Well, it's a really big deal when you're out trying to get these into really hard ground and the stakes are all bending on you. The design that they've incorporated into this stake basically makes it so that it has an angle to it, what I'd call an L bracket or something similar to that. You can see if you look straight down it, that it is at a 90 degree angle. That gives it a ton of strength. Compared to just a round stake, it's almost like a small piece of rod. When you go to push those into the ground and it's really hard or you hit a rock and then you're trying to pound it in, those easily bend. These ones don't bend nearly as easily and they hold up for a lifetime. Speaking of lifetime, let's talk about the warranty on this tent. Mountain Hardware has an incredible warranty. It's a limited lifetime warranty or something along those lines. And I've tested this recently, in fact, with a very old tent of mine. The tent that I had was literally about 15 years old. And if you read in Mountain Hardware's literature about their warranty, there are a ton of stipulations for them to be able to get out of a warranty. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. Honestly, I thought this tent's 15 years old. It's been through a ton there's no way they're gonna warranty it. And what had happened is that the stitching along the bottom wall of the tent where the nylon meets the mesh, it had completely ripped apart. I had an entire wall blow out. Again, this was 15 years old. I called up Mountain Hardware, they gave me a claim number, I sent it to them for those guys to inspect. Again, I figured I would never hear from them and they wouldn't warranty it. However, much to my surprise, they warrantied the tent. They literally gave me a credit back to Mountain Hardware for $250. I was absolutely blown away by this. I don't have enough good things to say about Mountain Hardware, their warranty, and their customer service. It's absolutely top notch. Again, this is the Mountain Hardware Aspect 3. This is a great three season tent if you're gonna be backpacking, motorcycling, cycling, anything where you're gonna be sleeping outside, check out the Aspect 3. And if you don't need a three person, check out the Aspect 2. If you guys have any questions about the tent, please leave them in the comment section below and Callie and I will get back to you. Also, if you're wondering where we are, what we're up to or who we're doing, check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Adventure Rig. If you guys like the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks again for watching. I'm Tyson with Adventure Rig.